JWL Sports, where we review all the best sports clips from around the country. Now, you're probably wondering, why should I watch over here instead of over there? Because over there, they don't care about what you have to say. They say this all the time. They talk down to us. They think we're just a bunch of clowns on YouTube, Twitter. But I think it's the opposite. I think we know exactly what we're talking about. So I read every single comment. So if you think what I'm saying is the most ridiculous thing you've ever heard, let me know in the comments below. If you think what I'm saying is the most amazing thing, then definitely please let me know. Either way, let's get into some discussions. Let's get into some fights. But ultimately, let's just have some fun. And please do consider subscribing. We are building an amazing community here. And it's turning into something truly, truly special. And I would absolutely love to see you part of it. I want to build a community that we all genuinely feel connected to. Something that we're really excited to be part of. So without further ado, let's get to it. We're watching a clip of First Things First, talking about the Ravens beating the Texans. Now, I was so emphatic that the Ravens were going to win this game very convincingly. And honestly, and this is why Nick Wright probably did it, he shocked me and probably a lot of people acting like that he had more faith in CJ Stroud than Lamar Jackson. And that he thought that not only were the Texans going to win this game, but they were going to like, I forget what he said, like win by like 10 plus points. Like that it was going to be a convincing win. And it wasn't even close. I mean, it was just obviously the score being 34 10. Um, and it was just like the the Ravens showed that they were elite. They were the, the only team that really proved that they were elite to these past um this past weekend for the playoff games. And Lamar Jackson proved that he is indeed the MVP. Um, and I really want to see how Nick Wright eats crow or how he distorts this. I, I really want to know. I mean, I don't see how he possibly could because it was just like, without a doubt, the most cut and dry game, the, the all of playoffs, really. Runs for 100 yards. <laughs> and uh, two more at Bruce, as the Bruce Ravens <laughs> dispatch of the Fritzky Texans. Harbaugh <laughs> taking the win in stride. Here he is. Uh, wow. I believe that's considered dancing. It's a little rough. I don't know what that is. Uh, Ravens are excited. Brew, I'm sure you have a level-headed approach, even though you've been correct about the Ravens. Since before the season even started, do you have any cogent analysis for this Baltimore victory? <laughs> <laughs> I've been sitting here for 35 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Listen to my man across the table run his mouth, <laughs> drop banners, <laughs> all of that. I'm gonna choke. Talk to him. And my man. <laughs> he, he, oh, I, I trust CJ Stroud more than Lamar Jackson in a playoff yeah, game. That That's right. what Nick Wright said. I didn't say that. Lamar Jackson delivered. As I thought he would, mm. as I said he would, the only thing was that would make this better uh -oh. is a sandwich. Why? why? Right here. I want to eat it right Bro, now. This doesn't With make chips sense. They were and a home. soda this pop. This is a visitor. <laughs> this is nah, but, but here's what they the do. He here's makes what me they do. They invite sense. you to their place. Okay. Come on over. We're going to have a good time. We're going to go play outside. <laughs> and then they eat lunch all up in your face in and give you, you none. Nothing. That's what they do. You don't eat. You come to Baltimore. <laughs> you do not eat. It's got to be so hard to do the audio. I got to learn how they do this because they go from like talking so softly to screaming and they must have to be like so on guard to like adjust the levels. I mean, obviously they got pro tech there and stuff like that and actual legit sound engineers, but like the way they start talking calmly and then start screaming, that's not easy. That's that's got to be such a headache and i'm not going to disrespect the chiefs but the oh. ravens oh, so this is what scared. they do yeah. oh. this is what they do uh, and ravens i think it's going winning to this that is what that is the type of cogent all 22 based analysis we've come to expect from the other states go of there the show if you want, but um, no this is all right i know people probably because of the comments i had on purdy which was nothing but honest i knew they'd be unpopular but they were honest yeah. would think that i'm a man who has trouble admitting when he was wrong I do not. I just need to know I was wrong. I was wrong about Baltimore. I did think Houston would win. And at halftime, Greg, I was like, uh-oh. Because I like, I understand people might not think I like Lamar because I didn't believe in the Ravens all year. That's true. Bru to believed the in them playoffs. all year. I picked them in the playoffs. Y'all two didn't think they no, made the playoffs. that's true. That's all true. But I like Lamar a lot. And I thought, I was like, oh, no. If they lose this game and it's another number one seed meltdown, the, yeah. the narrative surrounding was going to be ugly and bad. I have massive respect for them. Brew's been right on them, and they are 
listen, the Chiefs have played in five of these things prior to this year. Three times they had a worthy competitor. New England the first time and Cincinnati the last two, this is a worthy competitor. I'm, and so I, and so, it, uh, uh, so all props to Baltimore, who I've been wrong about all year long. Greg, you want to say ahead, Greg. Yeah, I, I was surprised. I'm not going to lie. The <laughs> way that C.J. Stroud and that offense had been rolling, I thought that they would put up a better fight. That defense looked, they looked great. I think that third quarter coming out, that first drive in the third quarter, it was great until it almost wasn't. And then it was great again because yeah. <laughs> Lamar almost threw a pick in the end zone that got dropped. Wow. Yeah. And then he turns around and he has a quarterback draw and he scores and it kind of broke their back and then they go on to an easy victory. So I, I was pretty surprised. I thought defensively, Wilds, that was the best. I thought the Ravens' defense in that game was the best any team's defense or offense has been in any game this postseason. Yeah. I thought the Ravens' defense yeah. in that game was damn near perfect. I don't, Absolutely. I don't get the sandwich you know what? fit that you know much. What? What you drinking, bro? Have some salt. Well, I think, um, you know, I mean, I think, yeah, Nick, right. That's what I, that's what I was saying before I, I put on this clip is that I just can't see how Nick could, you know, change that, right? Like how he could try to make it so that he's right. I do agree with what he said about Purdy, which, you know, obviously we already talked about that in the last video. But to me, um, it just really wasn't close, honestly. I mean, it was like, I understand the, the, the Texans are a great story, and Colin Cowherd talked about this. They're a great story. It's fun. Rookie coach, rookie quarterback. Um, a lot of people doubted um, C.J. Stroud in a lot of ways, um, especially, you know, pre-draft, uh, like the intelligence test or whatever that type of test was. And he obviously passed with flying, flying colors this season, and it was a great story. And then you start to believe, oh, my God, you know, like, could he make it to an AFC championship game? Could he even make it to a Super Bowl? Could he win a Super You know, you start to buy into it. And again, they beat Cleveland pretty convincingly, of course, but it wasn't necessarily, um, I know CJ Stroud appeared to play really well in that game, and he obviously did, and so I'm not taking anything away from him, but at the same time, he really didn't have to do much. Like, it's not like, you didn't see CJ Stroud's magic in that game. At least that's the way how I viewed it. And it's not to say that CJ Stroud isn't magic or that he can't be magic or that he won't be elite or that he's not elite. I'm not going to say that he is elite because you have to prove that you're elite before you're crowned as elite. But in that game, if memory serves me correctly, I don't really recall moments when I was like, oh my God, CJ Stroud has arrived. That was more like, you know, he didn't have to really do much. Their defense was like, you know, blowing up Flacco and stuff. Like, it was just like a complete game by Houston in general. And it was really like, just don't make mistakes. Um, and again, I feel like there was a couple times that he threw uh, the one play. I remember it was like to just like an absolute wide open receiver, which of course happens sometimes, um, no matter who you are. But um, this game, he, you know, obviously he disappeared. And, and, that's, and that's really always the point that I always try to make is, um, let's say CJ Stroud played the greatest game ever against the Cleveland Browns, right? Let's just say that was the most perfect game ever. And he made like these unbelievable back foot throws, closed eyes, you know, behind his back, like all these like crazy things. And then you have this game, right? And so then it's like, well, which is which? Who is who? You know, like who's the real CJ Stroud? And, and that's why you can't ever just isolate a game. And that is why how I just said that you have to prove that you are elite in order for me to crown you as being elite. And what makes you elite is being able to do something at a very high volume and a high frequency. And again, it's not to say that CJ Stroud, I don't want to turn this into CJ Stroud's not good enough. To me, this is really more about just how elite the Ravens are. And I'm really excited because... There's definitely a, a, a game where the Houston Texans win that game and beat out the Ravens. And then honestly, that would be a pretty poor AFC championship game because I don't think the Texans would have any chance at beating um, Patrick Mahomes, um, especially on the road in probably really cold, t brutal weather um, and rookie quarterback. I mean, the, the best thing that they, have, that they would have going for them is that they have a a clearly an elite defensive head coach, um, or at the very least, a defensive elite defensive mind. Um, I guess like his success as a head coach will is still to be determined. Um, but that would have maybe been you know somewhat interesting to see that again against Patrick Mahomes. But now we get to see two bona fide elite um, quarterbacks, and Lamar Jackson has is not a deer in headlights. Right, there was a, a, a legit chance that Stroud would have been a deer in headlights in the AFC title game. 
Um, and so now we get to see what Lamar can do in this situation. And Patrick Mahomes has to go on the road again. And that just makes more exciting narratives. And, you know, it's Lamar's time. CJ Stroud has, will have his time, hopefully, you know, hopefully one day. But to me, um, I'm just really excited to see Lamar ball out. And I, I really think, um, I keep kind of going back and forth, but as of right now, I think the Ravens will win this game convincingly. I'm not going to tell you it's going to be a 34-10 blowout game, but I think the Ravens should clearly show that they're just a better team. I think the Chiefs have the potential to make it close. And, and again, this is why football games are so brutal to predict because you just, right? What if Lamar did throw that interception in the game? And that maybe now the score is not 34-10. Maybe now the score ends up being, you know, 24 to 17 Houston, right? Like it's just, it's just the way those way football works. Like it's very tricky. It's not like basketball. It's not like baseball, even for that. Well, baseball kind of, right? You have, you throw one bad pitch and boom, the score is, uh, you know, three to nothing. Um, and which is a lot harder to come back from than say a three, nothing football game. But, um, it just really kind of changes things in that regard. And so, um, football is very brutal to predict. And, you know, when you look at the data, you see that the best, most successful gamblers, Okay, a good win rate is like 53 to 55 percent. That's how hard it is. Just ever so slightly above a coin flip. And you're considered to be a great gambler, you know, great sports better, I should say. Um, So this idea that you can consistently predict games or that you just know, I mean, like, is just comical to me. I mean, it it really, really is. And that's why um, I'm trying to get away from this whole idea of when I predict something right or predict a win. I don't want to be like, I was right, I was right, because I know there's a good chance 50% of the time I'm going to be wrong, you know? So it just is what it is. Um, But um, I think that game to me was obvious um, before it was going to happen that the Ravens are, to me, they're the only elite team left right now in the playoffs i do not think the chiefs are elite i do not think the 49ers are elite and i do not think detroit is elite i think the the closest you have to being elite um the other teams have their arguments right you have patrick mahomes right patrick mahomes is obviously elite but the chiefs have problems um the 49ers have an elite roster and they're seasoned vets which now make them even more elite of course as well as a, a seasoned vet head coach offensive head coach but Brock Purdy is the limiting factor. After watching that game, you do not just have this bona fide trust in Brock Purdy when you saw him play against the Packers. The Ravens not only are elite, but they're young in the right spots. Um, they have the elite offense, the elite defense, the elite head coach, and their offensive coordinators appears. I don't want to say he's elite because, again, I don't like to ever refer to anyone being elite after their, like, their first year of doing something. I just, you know, unless you go off and win. But even then, even if you go off and win the Super Bowl, right, you're just like, well, that could be an outlier. We don't know. So I really try to not throw around the word elite. To me, saying the word elite, I keep more sacred. That's why I don't just throw it out. I don't just say, well, that guy's elite. That guy's elite. Like, no, 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 no. You know, I think Jalen Hurts is a great quarterback. He's not elite to me. He's had elite moments, but you got to do it more sustained, right? Like in order to truly be crowned as elite not only do you have to have these elite moments but you have to do it at a high enough volume you can't do it every single day you can't do it every single time but you have to do it at a high enough frequency so um i think the ravens have what it takes and i think um hopefully i i I also think that the ravens beating the chiefs also gives us the potential for the more exciting Super Bowl. I get it. If you're a Chiefs fan, you want to see the Chiefs win again and again and again. And if you're really rooting for Patrick Mahomes and you want him to be the GOAT, right? You want him just to keep getting those Super Bowls and collect them. I get it. As me, as a fan who's just unbiased, I like variety. I like diversity. I like to see different things. I want to see Lamar Jackson in the Super Bowl. I want to see a, Lam- I want to see a Ravens versus Detroit Super Bowl, right? Two teams that no one was really necessarily expecting to go places necessarily definitely not the Detroit Lions um to me that's a fun and interesting Super Bowl um I would see I would watch I don't need to see the Chiefs versus um the 49ers again I mean I just don't I really don't it's just not that interesting to me I mean it would be somewhat interesting to see what could Brock Purdy do in a Super Bowl you know I'm interested to see that that would be cool and if he does win it continues that conversation that we get to talk about all year of like is he elite did they win you know is that good enough like will we ever give Brock Purdy his flowers right like that continues those fun conversations um but um besides that I mean 
I don't know. I would love to see what Lamar could do at the biggest stage because he's so dynamic, so exciting. And we're really lucky that we got to see, I mean, the AFC um, kind of unfolded pretty much as, as well as you would want it to. We got to see Patrick Mahomes go against Tua, which was not that exciting. I think maybe going up against a Justin Herbert would have been more exciting. Um, but then we got to see him go against Josh Allen is exciting. And now we get to see him go against Lamar Jackson. Exciting. That's fun. And then on the other side, we necessarily didn't see elite on elite on elite in the in the NFC, but we got to see these more interesting variety matchups. Baker Mayfield, a comeback story. Jordan Love, like what? Is Jordan Love for real? You know, they blew out Dak Prescott and the Cowboys. Exciting. Purdy and Love now, two quarterbacks who potentially will be the future of the NFL, right? They're, potentially people are saying that they're going to usurp Patrick Mahomes and Josh Allen. And it's like, okay, great. Let's see what you got. Wasn't the most, it was an exciting game. Wasn't the highest level quality game, but nonetheless, it was an exciting game. And now we have, and then we have Detroit Lions couldn't win a playoff game in, since 1991 or whatever the heck it was, you know, absolutely insane. And now we get to see them go up against in the NFC championship game. I think what would have made that slightly more exciting is if the Detroit Lions got to host that game just because of the crowd and the fans and just makes it probably a little bit more of a more bigger moment um, for just not only the Lions, but I think just football as a whole outside of you being a 49ers fan, of course. So I think that's an exciting matchup as well. So I think this is really cool, and this is really great, and um, no matter really who wins these uh, next two games, I think we're set to have a really fun rest of the playoffs and a really fun and exciting Super Bowl, and as someone who's a fan of it all, I could not be more excited, um, but what do you all think? Do you think the Ravens got this game against the Chiefs? Do you think the Ravens convincingly beat the Texans? Or do you think the score is actually kind of misleading that they could have lost that game? I would love to hear your thoughts on this one. Please let me know them in the comments below. Please don't forget to subscribe. As I said at the top, we are building an amazing community here. And I would love to see you part of it. Truly, truly, truly. And please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. It really does help with the visibility and the algorithm. It's just a click for you. It means nothing for you. And it really helps me out. So I would really be grateful for that. Thank you so much and see you next time.